Well, the speaker today probably needs no introduction. Uh, I call him a living legend because there's really nobody like him in our profession. But an individual that I happened to say to him earlier that, I don't know if he remembered that he was my commencement speaker when I graduated. And a very close friend of Dr. Parker, an individual that has dedicated all his life for the advancement of chiropractic, has served in boards of chiropractic colleges, have helped educate more people on chiropractic than probably anyone alive today. But an individual that I believe what makes him unique is the fact that he truly lives the principles of chiropractic. You know, I've often said that we must leave our message, that we can't go on pretending that we're trying to get our patients to do something we're not willing to do ourselves. That does not work. That's that lack of integrity. That's lack of congruency. And Dr. Siegerfuss has served as a model and as an example to so many of us in the chiropractic profession because he truly understands the premise of chiropractic, the philosophy of chiropractic. I know he's considered a great philosopher, but I really think of him as just an extraordinary, great human being. Please help me welcome Dr. Jim Sigafus. All right. He said, have fun. That's what life is all about. When I was in, uh, in practice, uh, if I didn't have fun, I wouldn't have gone. It, it, it needs to be fun, as does life. But there are certain things that we need to recognize. And I think that, fortunately, you have uh, joined a community of chiropractors, which makes you uh, a very special person because you have now a very special opportunity to take care of the people. And there's a great need to take care of the people. I just, uh, they're pushing the fact that over the past year or two or five, I guess it is, it's a marked increase in, in uh, Alzheimer's. And there's a marked increase in so many variety of, 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 of things that go wrong with people. And they can claim it's because they live longer. Well, what's the point in living longer if you don't know you're living? But the problem with us as chiropractors, I do believe, is that we don't promote ourselves the way we should. Chiropractic is a service-oriented uh, profession. Our whole purpose is to serve people. Our purpose is to take care of people. And the idea is if we take care of the people and we love the people, we serve the people, and we give them what they need, which is, is an understanding of what chiropractic is, they'll come back and we'll build a practice. We can't build a practice on, on uh, marketing. We can't build a practice on advertising, nor can we build a practice on uh, PR. can't build a practice on having cheap fees, if you will, or lowered fees. We can't build a practice on technique, and we can't build a practice on procedure. We can only build a practice on educating the people. We need to educate the people as to what chiropractic is and the basis of chiropractic, how it works, why it works, why we do what we do, and why we don't do some of the things we don't do. And to have people understand what you do and why you do it and from where it comes and what the potential is of being adjusted, what the potential is of going to the chiropractor overwhelms many people when they understand it. And so as a result, not only do they keep coming back to you on a regular basis, but they refer. So we build a practice based on that, on educating the people, having them understand what goes on. I would like to share with you something that I graduated from a school uh, and, and I failed for eight years. Totally. So if you ever want a seminar on how to fail, I can give that to you. But I had no understanding of what chiropractic was. I knew how to adjust. I, I was, a, a matter of fact, a good bone mover. And, but I, I had no idea why I was adjusting. I had no understanding of the principles of chiropractic. I had no idea why some things worked and some things didn't work. And finally, I discovered this thing called the principle and the philosophy of chiropractic. And I discovered it. In a, in, a, in a means that by going to a seminar and listening and running out because I thought the person that was talking was absolutely nuts. And as a result, I continued to fail for another two or three or four or five months until eventually I went and listened to somebody else talk that made more sense to me. 
And it was all about the philosophy. And then I picked up a, a mentor, and I picked up somebody to help me. And then I started reading the green books, which are the books that B.J. Palmer wrote. Hopefully you know about B.J. Palmer. And that as I continue to read that and continue to understand that, it made something of a, of a, of a rebirth for me, that, that I started to be able to understand who I was, what I was supposed to do, and why I was supposed to do it. So I can tell you that from the time that I graduated, for eight years, I, I absolutely failed. I have six children, all of whom are chiropractors, not because I failed, but because I didn't fail. And when I became a chiropractor was when I learned what the principle was, when I found out what the philosophy was, when I could understand this thing called innate intelligence, understand this thing called universal intelligence and their relationship. And as a result, we went from a be very frank with you, 17 visits a day. And that's about it. And, and I first went to Parker in 1960. And, and that gave me an impetus to start moving, to start understanding something, start having enough money to, at least to, uh, to get back home. But we went from that to 350 a day. And then ultimately uh, we moved to a farm where we took care of 2,000 people a week. And we did that for, for many a year. And why did we do that? Well, we did it because we had a dues to pay. We did it because we wanted to do it. We did it because we were in a, in a service profession that allowed me to be able to serve and give to people and to love the people and to have them come with their families and their children and their grandpas and their grandmoms and take care of large families and be able to go into the practice when it wasn't my time. We didn't have hours. We went in and had regular hours, but if it was a Sunday or if it was a Saturday night or if it was midnight and I was called, I would go. I was called on an occasion. I'll tell you a couple of occasions. I want you to understand that chiropractic, when we practice it correctly, is the most magnificent thing that you will have the privilege of doing. And I got called one night, a young baby, about four or five years old, was in the hospital. They asked me to come down and see him. Well, this was 12.30 at night. So I drove down to Baltimore, went into the hospital, and they had said that he had uh, muscular dystrophy. This is what their diagnosis was. And I checked him, and I adjusted him, and in 15 minutes his muscular dystrophy apparently left because he was up running up and down the halls and had to quiet him down because he was uh, frolicking. And, and, and another time I was called up to go into the hospital, and this child had, had been found at the bottom of the pool. Mother was watching her swim. She went in to catch the phone. When she came back out, the baby was floating on her face. They pulled her out, resuscitated her, took her up to the hospital, and she was all full of wires and under the oxygen tent and so on. And her mother asked me to come up and, and check the baby. Well, I don't consider this going up to check the baby that she had drowned. I'm going up to consider the fact that is there anything we can do? So I reached under the tent, pulled the wires away, got up under her little ear and adjusted her, and I went home. And I got a phone call then that she opened her eyes because she had been in a coma. She opened her eyes and responded for about two or three hours. The mother was able to take her out of the, the bed and hold her in her arms and where she graduated. She died. But her mother called me and said, what a, what a wonderful opportunity that we had provided by allowing her child to wake up and respond enough that she could hold her in her arms as she passed on the other side. And that was a great deal to that mother. And a great, had a, had a tremendous effect on me, to be very frank with you. And there's so many magnificent things that we can talk about. I, I want to share something with you because I, I want you to catch something. I want you to understand that you are privileged to be able to take care of these people. And I want you to understand it's not about money. If, if you're seeing large numbers of people, money will come to you. It's not about seeing a few people, seeing how many a few hours that you work and see how much money you can take from each individual. It's not about pocketbook therapy. It's about taking care of the folks. It's about taking care of all the people and doing it with absolute love and passion and desire and being able to tenderly and gingerly become a part of their family and they become a part of yours. 
And it's a miraculous thing that happens. It's a wonderful thing that happens. 